Sunday school classes, and uh, if you haven't ever tried Charlie's class, you should show up at 10 o'clock and join him. He's always got a great class. Would you lead our prayer, Charlie? And this first one, I want to dedicate this to Larry. And uh, to learn it, I went on I went on the YouTubes down there. And uh, on the YouTube, you know, I found George Younts, the old cathedrals, the bait, singing this song. And then there was Gene McDonald. And uh, great bass singers. But in every case, like either Anthony Berger or Gordon Moat was playing the piano. And I'm like, we need a bass singer singing this song with the, and playing the piano. 
Now, I'm not, I'm not that much of a bass singer. I'm a baritone with a little bit of a range. That's this Randall. Randall's a baritone with a great range. So, anyway, so let's uh, let's see what we can do with this. Well, today I went back to the place I used to go. Today I saw the same old crowd. I knew before When they asked me What had happened I tried to tell them Thanks to Calvary I don't come here Anymore Well thanks to Calvary last week I came up and sang with, with the guys and thank you for that I, I mean I forgot the words to a song I helped write but that's just part of the course right yes exactly uh, but I I appreciated that it was very touching and it was uh, it, was, it was just great so um, then I started thinking of some other stuff during the week because my mind just wanders like rabbit trails you know it's constant and um, I got to thinking about uh, moments, you know, using my voice, whether speaking or singing in front of lots of people, because I mean, over time I've been in front of millions of people somehow, and that's like a literal number, not an exaggeration, like it is millions. 
and um, the responsibility and the weight of all that. And there's been a couple of times I got compliments, and this is not about me, it's the Lord that, that put those skills and those things within me, and I fully grant that. I, I'm, I'm nothing. I just, that's the way that I was blessed, and I hope I've used it for the most part to the, to the right, you know, end. Uh, but sometimes I haven't. I'll, I'll get to that in a second. But I was thinking about a couple of the best compliments I'd ever received. They just kind of stood out. And uh, one of them, uh, as far as being in public and doing stuff, and uh, one of them, uh, David was there. Now, David and I, back about 25 years ago, roughly, we uh, DJed some dances and some proms about three or so. You remember that? I mean, that was great. He was... It was great, and um, yeah, I know I'm not gonna I'm not gonna get into too much detail, but we we DJed some proms and dances and stuff, and it, it was it was it, it was all right. And one I think it was Van Oss. I don't think it was Dixon. I think it was Van Oss. I had the track to uh, a song, uh, Sammy Kershaw uh, song, and I just it, it was time for a slow song. I mean, the mood was, was right. It was that typical moment, you know. That, so I thought, I've got this backing track to this. I'm just going to step out and sing it. And I had seen Sammy Kershaw in concert just about, I don't know, six or seven years before that at the Missouri State Fair. And, uh, you know, played his songs a lot on KEDA back when a bunch of us worked at KEDA, the old AM country station. And so I'm like, I'm going to step out here and sing. Do you remember that? I'm going to sing the Sammy Kershaw song. And, um, and um, I think it was this one. What would that have been? In B flat? Why am I asking you? I don't. Let me let me see. You are. Oh, that's it. That, oh, wow. Okay. It was this one. You are the love of my life. You are the reason I'm alive. And baby, 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 you don't have to say a word. I see it in your eyes. You remember when I did this? That's it, isn't it? And then it would go, but I need to tell you. The first time I held you, I knew you are the I didn't know I could play that. So um, after I did this song, and they're slow dancing, and it's all good. And I uh, I stepped back, and, and like later on, there was a bunch of, the, only the people that were just like right there knew that I was singing. People on the other side of the room thought it was Sammy Kershaw, thought it was the tape. <laughs> Absolutely one of the best compliments I've ever received. They thought it was the song, and they did not know I was singing, the people on the other side of the room. And the other um, good one that I got was at a Thunder game. For those of you who don't know, which is probably a small percentage, I was the home announcer for Thunder Home Games for the first four years of its, their existence here. And uh, I was the backup for prayer and the national anthem. There was prayer and the anthem before every game. And I was, I was the backup since I was a PA announcer and I was right there and I could do both those things. Uh, and so only two times in 200 games, roughly four years worth of games, uh, did the occasion ever occur to have to use me for prayer or anthem. And w the first time that happened, they said, oh, the pastor from so-and-so church didn't show up. You're going to have to do the prayer just right there from where you're at. Okay. And so I did. After the game, a lady came up to me. And she was just so complimentary, and she was just like, "It's that was so wonderful you doing the prayer. It was like, it was like you were actually talking to God." <laughs> and of course, I don't say it because my filter <laughs> kicked in, but in my mind, I'm going, yeah, "It's kind of the idea." <laughs> and she did. She was like, "Well, just no one has ever been up here this last year or two and ever seemed like that." And I'm like, wow, okay. Well, that's I only know what I know. 
Now, the unfortunate thing about that is, is that it wasn't a year or two after that. So, I mean, there's quite a witness right there, but it's only a year or two after that that I've just become caught up in myself and double-minded and uh, ruined the witness pretty significantly and fall pretty hard. So that weighs on me because there was, a, you know, 20,000 people, you know, I mean, so I know not all of us are in front of 20,000 people all the time, and I probably never will be again, but I'm just saying that there's a weight, and uh, that was a great compliment. That's the other just greatest compliment I've ever gotten. And so I hated that just a year or two later, I kind of stepped on that. The old devil comes in. So I say all that to kind of say this. This next song, um, it's a prayer, and it's just kind of the prayer of the this, the common folk day in and day out. This originally is not supposed to be a country song. This was a country, or a uh, Christian song. This was a country hit, but from about 45 years ago, when when Charlotte was negative 16. <laughs> and so, um, but when you think about it, when you listen to the words of this, you're just like, yeah, this is uh, this is just us talking to God day to day. And he's there, he's here, he's everywhere, and he hears us. Lord, I hope this day is good. I'm feeling empty and misunderstood. I should be thankful, Lord, I know I should. But Lord, I hope this day is good. Lord, if you forgot me, I've been praying to you faithfully. I'm not saying I'm a righteous man, but Lord, I hope you understand. that. Let's sing together. One of my favorite songs lately because it just shares kind of the continuation of this song that Jim just sang about how good our God is. We're going to let our kids 
going out to Children's Church as well as we begin to see.
Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Can you say amen? Amen. Well, I believe in the rapture, and I think it's going to happen. I believe with all my heart that one of these days the Lord's going to come back, the eastern sky is going to split, and we're going to go with Him because that's what the Bible says. Amen? Put your hands together. I'm ready to fly, fly, fly in the twinkling of an eye. When the trumpet sounds, I'll leave the ground and bid this world goodbye. I'm ready to fly, fly, fly. Sweet by and by, see my loved ones round the table, hear my angry choir angels, won't you come along, I'm ready to fly. Just as the days of Noah, evil is everywhere, many hate their neighbors, seems as so few care, Time is, signs of Christ returning are everywhere. Groom is getting ready, take us out of here. Yeah, I'm ready to fly, fly, fly in the twinkling of an eye. When the trumpet sounds, I'll leave the ground and bid this world goodbye. I'm ready to fly, 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 sweet by and by. And see my loved ones round the table, hear that heavenly choir bay. Won't you come along? I'm ready to fly. Every time I turn the TV on, I just am listening for the trumpet. It could be any day I'm ready to fly, 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 in the twinkling of the night. When the trumpet sounds, I'll leave the ground and bid this world goodbye. I'm ready to fly, 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 in the sweet by and by. Come see my loved ones round the table, hear that heavenly choir of angels. Won't you come along, I'm ready to fly. I'm ready to fly, 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 in the sweet by and by. When the trumpet sounds, I'll leave the ground and bid this world goodbye. I'm ready to fly, 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 in the sweet by and by. Come see my loved ones round the table, hear that heavenly choir of angels. Won't you come along? I'm ready to fly. Thank you, Jesus, for miracles. Eve Turner is in the hospital. And she needs a miracle. And she told me yesterday, she said, I believe God can fix this. When you tried everything, everything you tried to spend, you're sending out the harbor and the ship of hope has sailed. Your friends have no answers. Peace just can't be found. Oh, but there's a hand of mercy that can turn it all around. When nothing but a miracle will do, there's nothing that the hand of God. Shut 
even if it's self-inflicted, all right? There's none of us here without sin. There's none of us here that has lived a life above failure and faults. And we have to constantly renew and be revived and restored back to the Lord. And it's not that we have to be saved over and over again, but we need to be Moving back closer to the Lord. All throughout our lives we find ourselves trying to draw closer to the Lord. There's a lot of circumstances in life that we cannot control. But sometimes even the ones we can control, we go the wrong direction. Sometimes the ones that are self-inflicted are the worst of all. And that's... All right, because that's a bigger victory for Jesus when he gets those things going in the right direction. I'm thankful for the Lord's forgiveness and correction and redirection. I want you to look with me in chapter 4 of Ephesians. Chapter 4 of Ephesians. Now, I don't know if you all heard it, but there was a whole lot of hooping and hollering going on in my Sunday school class this morning. It was not a Mississippi Squirrel Revival. It was the Union Valley Mouse Revival. Everybody, every time we got into the scripture, he would come out and run under everybody's feet. And uh, just about the time we got to the good, every time we got to the real good part, somebody would go, Woo! I thought I was really doing a good job. Turns out it was a mouse. I'm excited at what God's done for me today. How about you? That's right. That's right. A church mouse for sure, huh? Ephesians chapter 4, he said, Paul is writing and he said, I am a prisoner of the Lord. I'm a prisoner of the Lord. You know, if you're a prisoner of the Lord, that means he provides your food. He provides the place that you sleep. He provides your direction and instruction each day. It means that everything is outlined and directed by him. So he chose, Paul is choosing to be a prisoner of the Lord. It's not that God took him captive. He chose to be a servant of the Lord instead of a servant of his own will and a servant of his own way. He decided to be a prisoner of the Lord. That's an interesting concept, isn't it? The Bible says, I am bought with a price. I am no longer my own. The Bible says that I belong to Jesus. That true freedom is for the Lord to own me. And that is an interesting concept. It's found all through the New Testament. It's a personal decision that you have to make on your own. Nobody can do that for you. Only you can 
Become a prisoner of the Lord and let him set you spiritually free while you're serving him. He says, walk, that means live. When you see the word walk in the New Testament, it almost always means live or act like it. Behavior. It's, it's, a, it's a term of behavior. He says, uh, I am a prisoner of the Lord and I'm asking you, all you church members at Ephesus, he's saying, I'm asking you or begging you, Please behave in a way that is worthy of being a servant of the Lord. That is a vocation. Our vocation is Christian. Today the word Christian has a lot of different meanings to people everywhere. In fact, if you start talking about being a Christian, generally the first thing people will do is start talking about somebody. Well, oh, so-and-so claimed to be a Christian and he was dirty and dishonest and he did this bad thing and that bad thing. He claimed, that's what you'll hear almost instantaneously if you talk about, you know, in the world. Well, what does it mean to be a Christian? Well, I've had too many bad experiences with people that go to church. You know, they've ripped me off and done dirty and talked bad about me. and bad. I was hurt. I went to church and I was hurt. And I'll never go back to church. And I thought, well, do you ever get hurt at your job? I bet you still go get your paycheck. Well, I just don't believe. Let me tell you something. Don't put your faith in Randall Christie or any other Christian. Put your faith in Jesus Christ because everyone else will let you down. There is no perfect person. And if you think that you're above sin, you lie to yourself. And the Bible says you're living in a delusional world. We all are sinners and have come short of the glory of God. But under the blood of Jesus, we no longer wear the label of sinner. And now we wear the label of saved, forgiven, child of God. We're still not perfect, but he is begging the church. Paul is almost begging. He says, I beseech you, please live and behave worthy of the word Christian. The vocation where which you are called. That means a servant of the Lord Jesus Christ. Try your hardest to live for Jesus. He says, and do it with all lowliness. We don't have lowliness, meekness. He doesn't want us to go around saying, well, I'm a Christian and I'm so much better than these other people that do this bad thing, these bad things. No, 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 no. I am, without Christ, I would be lost. And headed for hell. It is Jesus that helps me walk in a way that pleases Him. You hear me? Do not give up. Somebody may have mistreated you. You may have mistreated somebody. Someone might have lied to you. You may have lied to somebody. You may have hurt someone's feelings, and if you could go back, you could you would take it back a hundred times if you could. If you could turn back time, you would just can I get a do-over? Can I get a do-over? I don't know about y'all, but there I have a few regrets in life. I look back and think, I regret doing that. I regret saying that. I regret I went there. I regret, you know, I'm real suspicious of people who say they have no regrets. I can't see how anybody on the planet could live without any regrets. I have regrets. Guess what the Lord does with my regrets? Races them off my page. He removes them as far as the east is from the west. He's not going to stand up and read a list of all my regrets when I meet him face to face. He's going to say, I've already dealt with those. Those are already done. They're in the past. That does not exist anymore. He's going to say, as they old, uh, you talk about that cathedral song you sang earlier, they had another song called, What Sins Are You Talking About? When you face Jesus and you're worried about all the sins you've committed in your life, and He'll say, What sins are you talking about? I've already forgotten your sins. Are you thankful today that the Lord... Is going to forget your sins? Are you thankful today that He's going to 
forgive your faults and failures and mistakes. You know, no matter, it doesn't matter how bad. Saul became Paul, and he's writing this. You could say, well, how dare you get up there, Paul, and, and tell us to live a life, a good life. How dare you do that? I know how you were. You drug Christians out of their homes and threw them into the lion's den. You took little bitty children and killed them and sold them into slavery. This is what I know how you are, Paul. I know you. Don't pretend. Don't be a hypocrite. That's the devil talking. That's the devil talking. All of those horrible sins that Paul did were washed away. Why? Because Paul truly turned his heart, gave his heart, gave his life, surrendered to be a servant, even a prisoner of Jesus Christ. The only way to be set free of all those things is to give in to Jesus Christ. It's the only way. It's called repentance. Repentance is an attitude of our heart or our mind. And it produces actions. It produces results. But without true belief and true meaningful repentance, then nothing seems to change. It just goes on and on again and again and again. And he says, please, I'm begging you, please live a life. You know, I don't mean to pick on certain sins, but I just got to say that we're living in a time right now where I've never known so many Christians with such filthy mouths. And every time you turn around, Christians are talking filthy language and telling filthy jokes on and on. It's very discouraging to others. You're talk and your walk should reflect who your Lord is. Amen? He goes on to say, please, in verse 3, please keep unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. Right here at Union Valley, we are united in the Spirit. That means the Holy Spirit of God unites us. We don't agree on every little thing. We come from different backgrounds. We may have different views on this scripture or that scripture, but we're united under the Holy Spirit of God. That we're saved, that we're forgiven, and we're going to reach others with that same good news. I, this morning, I saw a little video clip from Pakistan. I don't know if he sent it to you or not. You can't understand a word he's saying, except every now and then you hear, Mike, blah, 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 blah. Jan, blah, 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 blah. Susie, blah, 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 blah. And see, our missionary in Pakistan is going next week, Tuesday, to Kenya with our world mission team. He's so excited about it. And we're going to see people say, Wow, what would it be like to be to have to live in unity of the Spirit and bond of peace in a place where they may show up tomorrow, burn your house down or your church down, and even kill your family. And that's happening there in Pakistan. It's also happening in Kenya. Here we have a preacher who just last month in a nearby city over a hundred churches and homes were burned by Muslims. Just near, very near to where this church is. And he's going to leave there and go to Kenya and try to lead people to Jesus in a place where they're liable to have their whole family murdered if they turn to Jesus. Here we are in this cushy, cushy life, having everything we need or want nearly. 
So people have so much they don't have time for church anymore. They have so many places to go and so much money to get there they don't have time for church anymore. Don't have time to even bring their kids to church and Sunday school. It's too much time. Too much effort. Don't you know I'm sleepy on Sunday mornings? Well, so am I. And Susie won't let me skip. <laughs> I mean, isn't it true? Isn't that where we are in America? What else has to happen? Wars, the Twin Towers fall, the, the economic collapse, inflation out of control. It's worse than it's been since Jimmy Carter's time. Interest rates are 8%. I'm, you know, and there's probably going to go over 10. I'm telling you guys, what else does it take? There is, I don't think there's one thing God can do to America anymore to get his pe people's attention. Don't get so down because of your personal failure that you forget who you belong to. You belong to Jesus. He already knew you were going to mess up. He already knew you were going to be in this situation. He already knew it. He didn't plan it. He didn't like it. He gave you every way to get out of it before you got in it. But I'll tell you, you chose to get in it and He wants to pull you out of it. Can I get an amen? Amen. No matter what it is, it may all just be, you know, that's what gets me is up here. I have too much time to think. Driving I, I got the Highway 40 blue. All the time. I added it up the other day. Gerald, I get to Passion Plane back. 325,000 miles that I've driven. That's nothing compared to Mike Russell. He says... Yeah, well, listen to this. I'm not complaining. I'm thankful that we have a great church. I'm thankful that we can meet in our gymnasium. I'm thankful that we know who Jesus is. I'm thankful that He will help us get back on track when we stray. He says... Don't forget this. I'm going to close with this. Verse 4. Don't forget this. Whether you're a farmer or a businessman, law enforcement, school teacher, whatever you are, salesman, entrepreneur, whatever you are in your career, God can bless you. He can work for you. He may have closed this door, but He's about to open a better one. He may have closed this door, but don't give up on Him. He already knows the future. You've just got to be real sensitive to where He wants you to go. And it may not be what you want to do. It may not be what you want to do, but it might be exactly what God wants you to do. Paul says, I am a prisoner. And he is jumping up and down happy. I'm a prisoner of the Lord Jesus Christ. You know what that means? That every meal I get is going to be from Him. Every place I get to lay my head is going to be from Him. He's going to tell me where to go every day. And He's going to make sure I'm safe at night. Until He is ready for me to come home, I would gladly be the prisoner of Jesus Christ. That's how I feel. I'm glad to be God's prisoner. He says, don't forget. Unity is about this. There's only one body, one spirit. Even as you are called unto one hope, one Lord, one faith, one baptism. There's only one. One God, Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all. I love that scripture. There's not many different paths to heaven. There's, it's not about how sincere a person is. It's about whether they're following the right leader. It's not about whether you're religious. It's about whether you're serving Jesus. 
You see, there's only one way. He says straight or straight is the way, narrow is the way, straight is the gate. It's a little bitty gate to a one-way street. And you've got to find it through Jesus Christ. He says one body, one spirit, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, and one God. It is Jesus Christ, the Lord. He has a group of people right now in this world, and I think that many of you, maybe all of you are part of it, a group of people right now that are looking for Him. In every day that we live, what does the Lord have for me today? What does the Lord have for me to do today? What, what does the Lord have for me to learn today? I've taught Revelation so many times, I never thought I could learn another thing. I thought, well, maybe I know it all. No, I'm just joking. If you've ever been in my Re Revelation class, you know that my favorite line in teaching Revelation is, I don't know. Because a lot of things we don't know. <clears throat> There's one Spirit, one God, one Lord, one baptism, one faith. The world has all these different ideas about faith. There's only one faith. The Bible says every person is given the measure of faith. That is a supernatural ability to connect with their creator. Every human being, every human soul is given the one faith, the one thing in their life that is searching for their creator. And it's up to us to tell them who he is and share Christ and the Holy Spirit flows through us and touches them. And all of a sudden they want what they feel that we have. And their faith leaps inside of them and they want to be part of Jesus' family. This is what it's all about. It is all about that. Everything we do. We're having a widow's dinner this afternoon. And uh, we're so excited about it. There's going to be 50 or so widows and widowers here. And I'm going to ask you to help me set up some tables in a minute for it. But you know what? We're going to share Christ with them. We're going to just encourage them. We're going to feed them a good meal. And we're going to uh, show them that, look, Jesus Christ is so real in our lives. It's the number one thing. And they always witness back to us. Many of them go to church. Some of them are young. Some of them are old. And they're all in between. And they say, Jesus is the answer to my problem. My loneliness. You see, I'm trying to tell you today, you got to live it if you love it. If you love Jesus, you got to live it. Talk it. Walk it. Be a Christian. Be the family of Jesus Christ. And all else fades into the background. Make it your number one goal, your number one focus, your number one motivation for getting up in the morning. Who can I share Christ with today? Through my business, through my teaching, through my office, through whatever it is. I'll tell you, I went to see Eve Turner yesterday and some others did too at Valley View. They're probably transferring her to Baylor today. But she has tumors on her back and broken vertebrae. She's in a lot of pain. They're going to send her home instead of to Baylor. Okay. They're putting her on blood thinners and she's on morphine. She needs a miracle. But let me tell you what she told me yesterday. She'd been a missionary in Brazil for years. Pentecostal preacher. Missionary. And she loved it here at our church. She told me yesterday, she said, in a very broken English, she said, Pastor, I know God can fix me. But I am asking Him not to leave me here in this pain. That's how I am praying, is what she told me yesterday. I am now praying, God, don't leave me here in this pain. Now, guys, <clears throat> that's faith. We're all going to face a time where we're about to meet Jesus. Whether you know him or whether you don't know him, you're going to meet him. And when you know how much he loves you, 
You can ask him, take me home. Isn't that awesome? Instead of being afraid of what's next, to be able to say, Lord, I've lived as long as I can. I can't live in this pain anymore. Would you please either heal me or take me home? That's the prayer that she wanted us to pray for her. Either heal her or take her home. Don't let her linger in this pain. That takes a lot of faith. That takes a lot of faith from a prisoner of Jesus Christ who has been set free by Him. Amen? Would you stand with me? My prayer is today that Everyone here this morning, either through a song or maybe Jim's testimony or a message, Sunday school class, somehow, some way, the Lord has spoken to you today. And I want to encourage you do not let the world, the problems, the tasks at hand stand in your way and prevent you from serving Jesus Christ in a way that you know He has called you to do. I saw a post this week. I copied it. And I really, really like it. it just picture this in your mind. There's the door post with the blood on it. The blood over the doorpost. And the caption read this. God did not spare the worthy. You see, it was the blood it was all the blood. God did not spare the worthy. It wasn't about being worthy. It was about having Jesus' blood as the number one thing in your life. Speak to my heart, Lord, speak to my heart. Speak to my heart, I pray. It's all seen. Yielded and still, seeking thy will. Oh, speak to my heart today. Speak to my heart, Lord Jesus. I'm here to pray with you. That's why I'm here. If you want to make a commitment to the Lord today, that's why this invitation is given. Maybe it's time to rededicate your life and change your focus.